and my name is Mena Ward. Let me start with the aims and objectives. So our aim today is to guide you step by step on how to complete the timesheets and submit claims to our government for payment. So the content um, for today's session is I'm going to set the scene, um, show you how to sign back into Government Gateway because I know we've had some questions on that. I'll take you through the claims process step by step, signpost you to further help. And um, of course, you've got the Q&A there, so please um, ask your questions and we'll answer them as best as we can. So let me set the scene. So the situation at the moment is that you as providers have registered your setting. So just to let you know that 85% of settings have been registered so far as from the 1st of December. 82% have been activated and it's really important for your settings to be activated in order for you to process claims. So let me explain a bit further. Um, parent eligibility applications have been submitted. We've received approximately 2,700 to date. 1,000 of them have been approved. Um, some of them are, uh, require more information, but the remainder are in progress. And the LA reviews both those registrations and the applications from the parents and they get approved. In the meantime, while the LAs are doing their job, are you as providers are having that offline discussion with the parents to discuss exactly how many childcare offer hours you want and which settings they want to put their child in. So all that goes on at the same time. And once you've established the um, childcare offer hours required and the settings and the early education settings, it's the parent, here it comes, the parent that sets up the actual agreement. They request the offer hours, but you are well aware of the offer hours that they're going to request online. So as the provider, you will have activated your setting with the activation pin that arrives by post. So that's important that that step is done in order for um, the parent, they would be able to pick up your name from the list of settings when it appears on the agreement. But more importantly, for you as providers, you will be able to approve uh, the agreement that's set up by the parent. So that's why that activation pin is really important for you to input back into the system so that you activate your setting. So once you approve the agreement, then you're on the step we're at now, which is um, you will be able to process your claims. So that's just to set the scene for you. So let's go to the claims process. <clears throat> Oops, I just slipped that one to go quick. So you would need to sign back in really to the government gateway. So there's a few slides here I can show you. So you sign back into the government gateway. Here, I've got the website where you can sign back into. Obviously, you would sign back, back in on the original um, government gateway where you set up your setting in the first place. But here, if you go back to your gov.wales slash childcare website, um, I've just highlighted a couple of links there. There's quite a few links available to you as providers, which is really useful. Uh, here, I've got providers sign in to your childcare offer for Wales or providers get help with childcare offer for Wales at the bottom. I quite like that option because there's a lot of uh, frequently asked questions listed for you to refer to. Um, I'll just show you here on the, the next page. So you'll see that providers get help with childcare offer for Wales screen and as you scroll down that there will be a long list 
of items for you to read. Uh, it includes the previous live events and recordings regard to registering your setting, activating your setting and um, agreements. So you can always refer back to those previous recordings. Uh, but at the bottom there, there is a link to sign into your account, back into your account. And that would take you to this page. And on the bottom, you'll see the green button to sign in. So you'll be signing back in, of course, with your uh, user ID and password. So if I take you to the screen that would appear when you click on sign in, you will recognize that screen by now, I'm sure. So you'd pop in your government gateway user ID, 12 characters. Um, you'd enter your password and you click on the green sign in button. So it'd look like that. And of course, then you'd continue on to the access code. So that will come up on your phone, your mobile phone, the one that you submitted when you registered the setting in the first place. So that's uh, the unique six digit code gets popped into the access code box there and you're ready to click on continue once again to move into the child care offer. So of course here we are at the claims session. So let's have a look at the screen you arrive at. You'll arrive at your dashboard. So hopefully you're all familiar with this dashboard screen now and you'll be able to see the link to the claims in blue there and the link to the agreements, of course. If you don't see those two links, it's because you haven't activated your setting. So with your claims, you click on the blue link there to move on to the next screen. And it'll bring you now. This is obviously a snapshot of a screen for demonstration, and this is eventually what it would look like for you. You would have a list of all your timesheets week by week by week all listed in here. Obviously, when you start in January um, submitting your claims, you will have one week showing up for January, and then it will start building up for all the time that you're claiming on the childcare offer. At the top of the screen, you will have the timesheets for and the name of your setting, the childcare offer setting number, which you will have had when you set up your um, setting in the first place, the postcode for your setting, and there is a line in there. I'm not sure if you can quite see it, but it says timesheets are available <clears throat> from 7 p.m. every Friday. So you can submit your timesheets at 7 o'clock. Uh, each week on a Friday. There will be the list then uh, week by week, as I say, um, in listed in date order with every Monday. The latest will be showing up first and then you'll have a column of statuses and actions. I'm just going to take you onto the next screen just to focus in on those statuses. So here. Um, the statuses, there are four types of statuses that you can have. Um, you would have one showing not started, so that's how you'd uh, kickstart this. You'd go on to a not started timesheet so you can start it. Um, when you start completing a timesheet and you haven't got all the information on hand, that's fine. You can save and close and then the status will become started and you can click on resume and continue. Once you've completed your timesheet, the status would be changed to submitted. And then you can view all submitted timesheets. And once they submitted into the system and get paid, the status then changes to paid. That's the one that's in green that you can see there. And you'll be able to view all paid timesheets and all historical claims that you've put through. So there's the four statuses that you'll, you'll see on your timesheets.
So let's move on to the actual timesheet. So at this point then in January, you would be you'd have your first timesheet showing. You'd click on the start, the blue start button for that not started timesheet that be on your list. And you'll arrive at a screen like this. So here, once again, of course, you'll have your setting name and the details at the top of the screen. You'll have the date of the actual week that you're completing, the week commencing with that status marker. And there is a line in here again, you might be quite small for you to see at the moment, so I'll just read it out to you, where it says the time must be entered in a decimal format for example 10.5. So the um, hours that you input are in hourly and half hourly uh, rates. But what you'll have is a list of all the child's names that's under the setting in alphabetical order. Alongside that, column will be the parent and guardian's names and alongside that the period for the timesheet which would be term time in this particular example I've got here so the term time which will correspond with the week commencing um, on the top of the screen. Um, the agreement offer hours will be listed next. So the agreement offer hours, which is on the grey background here, are all the hours that have been pulled through from the children's agreements. So that will appear automatically on your screen. So the only two columns that you need to be concerned with is completing the booked offer hours and the actual offer hours attended at the end there. So here, for example, with the booked offer hours, you would put in the booked offer hours that you've had that discussion with the parent and you'd input that. The booked offer hours will never exceed the agreement hours. Then you will enter the actual offer hours attended by the child and that cannot ever be more than what was booked. Um, if you input incorrect information, then you will have, as you can imagine, you will have um, red warning messages coming up, which I'll show you in a second. And just so you know that as the provider, you will always be paid on the booked offer hours. At the bottom of the screen in blue, uh, it does say how to complete. So there will be a help text there for you to be able to click on and it will clarify that fact that you can't have booked hours that exceed the agreement hours and you can't have actual hours that exceed the booked offer hours. That information is also on our guidance, so please look at the supporting information that will be available online for you regarding claims. So there's plenty of information available. But let me go to the next screen to clarify that in a bit more depth. So I would click on, once I've completed that inf information, I'd click on save and continue and go on to the next step. But I want to show you a little bit more about this one. So let me just move here. OK, so here I've got Amy um, and I've put the booked offer hours for Amy. We were told it was 10 hours by the parent and actually Amy attended the full 10 hours and that was probably will be pretty much the norm for most parents. Um, Edward here, just as an example, I've said that Edward has been booked for 10 hours, but he actually attended nine. So yeah, he might have been picked up uh, an hour earlier than uh, expected. So that's fine. As uh, for you as providers, you will be paid on the booked offer hours, on the full 10 hours. Fern, same, booked 10, actually attended 10. George, 17.5. In some instances with some settings, you put in 17 and a half, actually attended 17.5. Hill went for the 10, full 10, Hill as well 10, and that's kind of pretty much uh, the norm, as I say. Um, Jack here, I just put a different example here. Jack, on his agreement, the parents went for the, for the full maximum amount that they thought they would need for Jack, 20 hours. But for this particular week, um, Jack was booked in for 10 hours. He actually, um, only attended um, eight 
hours. So he may have left a little bit earlier as well during that week, but you will be paid on the 10 hours, of course. Uh, Laurie, next, is booked for 10 hours and actually um, hasn't claimed she may have been ill that week, may have gone on holiday, but um, she didn't actually attend. So as providers, you would enter zero in the actual offer hours. Get paid on the 10, of course. Um, Sarah and Stefan, I've got two examples there, again, similar to Jack, where the agreement was that generally they will want 10 hours each week. But on this particular week, Sarah and Stefan had booked in for five hours. Now, this could be because um, the mother, Penny, in this instance, as an example, I may be a shift worker. And this system has been designed to be flexible. So where the agreement is that generally Sarah and Stefan will be coming for 10 hours on this particular week, then I will only need five hours booked. Next week, possibly it will be back to 10. So, and the week after it will be back to five. So there's that flexibility for those parents who work um, shift hours. That's what's happened there. So those are just examples. Again, sorry, I just flicked through that a little bit too quick there. Um, so that's just to explain um, that how the agreement itself really underpins the claim process. So um, as I say, the recording is available, so you may want to watch the recording for the agreement uh, again. And also for your information, the LAs will have access to reports and can monitor the differences between the booked offer hours and the actual offer hours. So if there's consistently a difference between the booked and actual offer hours, for example, the one I explained, uh, Jack has booked 10, but he attended eight hours each week. And if that happens consistently, then the LAs may ask you to work with a parent and reduce the booked offer hours possibly. So there are reporting tools available for the LAs. OK, let's see what happens if you actually enter any values greater than is allowed. So I'll just pop onto the next screen. So here um, my example is that Arthur in the agreement. Offline agreement, remember you had that discussion, the parent creates the agreement. They've gone for the maximum 20 hours agreement because an element of that term time, as you know, term time hours um, in includes the early education, the 10 hours early education, 20 hours term time childcare, making up the 30 hours of the childcare offer. So Arthur in this instance has gone to for the booked full amount of 20 hours and actually attended 20 hours. Rianne, however, um, has booked 10 hours and actually attended 12 hours. Now on this system, they won't allow for the actual hours to be more than the booked offer hours. Uh, in that in that situation, it might be that Rian would have to Rian's parents would have to pay for the extra two hours, or if that was a requirement all the way through each week, each week, each week, uh, to have the extra two hours every week, then it might be. Uh, a need to consider changing the agreement itself. And at the moment, change the agreement is a matter of the parent cancelling the agreement and creating a new one. But the system will not accept that um, 12 hours uh, and you'll have a red error message coming up. Sarah and Ward here, this example of book 25 hours, actual 25 hours, but the agreement between yourself and the parent initially 
and is in agreement, as you can see, has been pulled through of 20 hours. So you can't possibly book 25 and 25 here because that wasn't agreed in the first place. And on this next screen, I'll show you the actual red error messages that will pop up. So there you will see that for the 12 hours, the actual offer hours attended are above the agreement offer hours and will not be accepted. The same here for the 225 hours will not be accepted. So um, there are ways around it, they say, through the agreements. You may want to um, consider looking at that recording again, possibly. So for you, um, it would be a matter of clicking back to my timesheets because those entries will have uh, been removed and input in the correct values. And then you're ready to save and continue. However, let's have a look at the holiday weeks. We've discussed the term time weeks. This is the holiday weeks. So the same layout um, exactly works in the same way. Booked offer hours and actual offer hours attended needs to be completed. And um, there's a slight difference here in that, just to clarify, Ben and David, these two here, have booked 10 hours and actually attended 10 hours during the holiday time. And what happens in the system is those holiday hours that have been claimed for gets knocked off the child's summary screen that the parent can see. So the parent can actually keep tally or keep tabs on the number of holiday weeks that they have left for the child. I'll show you that screen in a second. Amy, however, um, Amy, Amy has been booked in for the holiday week and the parent don't wish to claim for that holiday week. So for you as the provider, you would enter a zero in the booked offer hours and a zero in the actual hours attended. That will mean that that doesn't automatically get deducted from the overall nine weeks holiday entitlement that's um, with the childcare offer for Wales. I'm here with the providers. The other thing I wanted to show you that as providers on your screens, you will be able to see at the bottom here the children that have no funded holiday weeks remaining. So Adam Smith and Bertie, for example, um, they've used up all their uh, funded holiday weeks and therefore the parents will have to fund those holiday hours themselves. So you will be able to see that information as well. So that's the holiday weeks. Uh, let me show you what the parents uh, can see, how they actually see the tally of the holiday weeks being knocked off as you uh, put the information in in the claims here. So this is just a little snapshot. Um, so the parents actually have a child summary which shows them the holiday weeks that's remaining. So out of the overall nine weeks a year that's available with a childcare offer, as the claims uh, are completed, you'll see that the nine weeks have been reduced here for Amy to six weeks are remaining when the claims go in. And then as far as the claims are concerned as with the provider for yourselves, when you've saved and saved and closed to continue, sorry, saved and continue to continue on to the review sheet, you can see all the information that you've inputted. The calculations have been done in the background based on the current amount, hourly amount of five pounds an hour at the moment. And uh, that's calculated, as I say, on the booked offer hours. You get paid on the booked offer hours. Then the overall total for that week is shown on the bottom of the screen. And when you're ready and happy, you would click the red button to submit for payment at seven o'clock from seven o'clock um, every Friday for each week. 
And as providers, you will have signed up to the claims T's and C's, terms and conditions, uh, which include claiming the funding weekly in arrears. And uh, you must submit all your weekly claims uh, week by week, but certainly within two calendar months. Once you click on submit for payment, the system will generate a payment reference and it, you'll have this notification in green to say your timesheet has been submitted. On the bottom there, it says what happens next. So you'll be sent um, a confirmation, a remittance advice note, confirmation notification to your email address and the payment will be processed on the next working day, Monday to Friday, and will be in your bank account as per your bank's processing time. So as far as that claim sheet is concerned, once it's been submitted and paid, the status will show as paid on your screens and you can always view paid um, claims. So there's, that's been paid. You'll receive a remittance advice. That'll be emailed to you and it'll have the details of the date and the total amount paid as well. Um, just on the next screen, I just wanted to show you this screen so that if you click on claims and you see this, it's pretty much because um, your setting won't have been activated. So if you have no claims, it's probably because you haven't been able to approve a claim because you haven't activated the setting. So that's why that um, step is important for you to do. But let me um, just summarise this claims process. There are only six steps involved. So let me show you in a nutshell um, the actual steps that I just showed you uh, screen by screen. So first of all, as the provider, you will sign back in to your dashboard. You'll click on your claims link. You'll see the claim summary screen with all the weekly timesheets week by week. You will simply input the booked and actual hours for the timesheet. You'll have a chance to review all the information that is OK. And then you'll be ready to click on submit for payment. As soon as you do that, you will have the system will generate the payment reference. And the system will then pay and you'll receive the paid status on your screen along with a remittance device which will be emailed to you and finally in blue as the provider you'll be able to view a list of the claims which will appear on your summary screen just to give you the heads up as from january it gets a little bit more colorful now um exactly the same steps this is what you will go through um, but we're still working on the system, continually working on the system. So by January, just so you know that LAs and the parents, as well as yourselves, will be able to view the claims. So there's complete transparency on the system as well. And that's really to protect everyone that's involved and protect public money, of course. And that's it. Those are the steps for your claims process. Just to take you um, to the last slide coming up for further help, then you can contact your local authority, but they won't have received the training as yet. They're receiving the training uh, next week, so um, they may not be able to answer your questions at the moment. Uh, also, your local family information service will be able to help you. There'll be supporting information for you to view online. As I said at the beginning, there's a heap of information available to you on gov.wales websites, including how to sign back in, amongst other information. But there's also the recordings for the agreements and registering a setting, which includes activating a setting that you can look back on as a refresher. And this uh, will be recorded as well, the claims recording, but this will be available in early January 
and that's just before uh, the claims process itself. So you'll have it fresh in your mind then. And that's it. So thank you very much for attending. That's the claims and um, timesheets process. Diolch